on J20, uh, we saw broad forms of resistance, and now we're fa seeing that repression. Uh, last year, my home was raided. I was later indicted. In this case, that was terrible. Um, but on Monday, there's another round of uh, round of court cases happening. Uh, there's the next trial is starting. So we're having this rally here today. Demand they drop all the charges. Uh, call out the bullshit of this uh, of these trumped up charges, and that's it. Um, I'm here to introduce David. He'll be emceeing. Hey, I am so glad so many of you came out. I'm so glad so much of the press is out. Um, we have a very important message to send today, which is that protesting is not a crime, and that we will not allow the right that is attempting to run our country to demonize and vilify those who resist um, its agenda. So we are um, here to stand in solidarity and in unity, and to say that if we fight together, we can actually win. And the fact that so many of the charges have been dropped, um, does in fact show that what we do and what we say matters. So let me just introduce our first speaker, Chip Gibbons. Hi, my name is Chip Gibbons. I'm with a group called Defending Rights and Dissent. We were founded in 1960 to oppose the House Un-American Activities Committee, and we have been fighting the forces that wish to repress political expression in the United States ever since. We stand in solidarity with the J20 defendants. We recognize this trial as what it is. It's an attempt to literally criminalize dissent. The prosecution in making their case has tried to turn journalism and protesting into elements of a criminal offense. And this is part of a larger trend nationwide. Uh, states all over the country are trying to pass anti-protest laws. And all of these bills and all of this repression is in response to their fear of successful social movements. They're afraid of the very militant anti-Trump movement. They're afraid in states of boycott and divestments and sanctions against Israel, so they pass anti-BDS bills. They're afraid of Black Lives Matter, so they pass bills to try to make um, blocking the highway uh, a felony. So we see this trial as an attempt to repress dissent, and we are absolutely for um, dropping all of the charges of the remaining defendants. Awesome, and then for a little more legal update, uh, Sam from the DC Legal Posse. Hey folks, uh, my name is Sam Menefi Livy. I'm a member of the DC Legal Posse and Defend J20 Resistance, which is a broad national and international network of people who are supporting all of the defendants through the disposition of all the cases. Uh, on Monday, uh, May 14th, uh, the next four uh, defendants will go on trial. Uh, jury selection starts Monday, opening statements are likely to start Wednesday. Um, and uh, it, it, at the beginning of the week, it looked like we were actually going to have six people going on trial, but two people got continued off for various reasons, including uh, the judge basically intervening, saying that the prosecutor had uh, improperly attributed co-conspirator statements. There's a lot of sort of like, it, it's, it's unclear exactly what this, what this ruling will mean for the case yet, but uh, it, it gives us a lot of hope, and it was definitely a positive development, especially for that defendant. Um, we are uh, definitely hopeful about the show of support that's been demonstrated uh, over and over again throughout this entire case by the D.C. community and by people across the country. Uh, and uh, there, are def there are plans to pack the court on Monday. Um, folks should definitely show up. Uh, defendants are asking for a regular court decorum and business schedule attire if you can come. Black is preferred. Um, we're also uh, um, excited to see what the developments will be. Um, I think that you know the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, was, was thoroughly embarrassed in the first trial in November and December, and we believe that they will be thoroughly embarrassed again. Uh, and um, we are, you know, continue to hope that uh, this will uh, show the, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, as well as the D.C. Superior Court, that the D.C. community, uh, the broader left, um, and uh, right-thinking people everywhere will not stand for the criminalization of protests, will not grant, uh, stand for the criminalization of organizing, of collective action, of dissent, of politics. Um, so thanks everyone for coming out today, um, and uh, we're really excited to uh, see the next steps in this and for everyone to be free. Thank you. Um, so. A few people know more about resisting dissent uh, than our next speaker. I just want to introduce uh, Chelsea Manning. Yeah. I'm not going to use the microphone. Can you all hear me? Yeah. All right, so I'm here in solidarity for my, with my friends who have, many of them have faced charges and some of them have been dropped and many of them are still facing charges. 59 people are still facing felony charges. I stand in solidarity with them. I stand in solidarity with the people arrested in Michigan. 
a few months ago, whenever uh, there was a protest against Richard Spencer, I stand in solidarity with, with, the, uh, with the people who last year ended up in uh, having their charges uh, in Durham uh, for the uh, statue being taken down. Like we managed to get those charges down. Maya Little has had her, you know, like has has had charges for uh, defacing a statue at UNC. Uh, U University of North Carolina. So we've been continually seeing people getting charged with felony offenses for standing up and fighting back. And if there's anything I've learned from a long trial, it is that the worst part, I spent three and a half years in, in pretrial confinement waiting for charges to be worked out. The worst part is waiting the worst part is having these charges be, you know, going for 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. It continues and it goes on and your life stops. You just want to know when the charges are going to go away or if you're going to get a sentence or anything. And they've continually managed to not put an end to this. So we need to make this stop. We need to make Kirkhoff realize that what she's doing is she's basically running what the you know she's basically running the, the uh, prosecution by the by the government for this administration to stifle all political dissent in the United States. This is not about the J20 defendants so much as it is about everyone's ability and right to be able to fight back. All right. That's why I'm here. And I didn't think I was gonna be able to stand here today, but I did, because when we fight back, we can make victories and we can make a difference. So, thank you all. Thank you, Chelsea. I think one thing that has become increasingly clear to a lot of us as we've watched the various attempts to criminalize property destruction or wearing a certain color scheme or what have you is that what the state is out to do is set legal precedents through which the next time there's some kind of urban rebellion against a, a police killing of an unarmed black black person in this country any activists who are located in that neighborhood could be charged with conspiracy to launch whatever um, a, a acts of property destruction the police alleged to have taken place so it's very important that we take our aim at this a repressive tide at its um, at its, at its very inception and that we resisted every step of the way. And um, we're just gonna close out now. Um, I am looking for Dylan. Right here. Okay, here you go. So just the other day, uh, several, or a black man was killed in Washington, DC, right? Uh, the people who beat protesters on J20 also were the same people that killed same police force that killed a black man the other day. So when we're talking about uh, J20, MPD is a problem, and I'm gonna lead us in a couple of chants, uh, and then we'll close out. So, protesting is not a crime. L12 should do no time. Protesting is not a crime. L12 should do no time. Protesting is not a crime. L12 should do no time. Protesting is not a crime. L12 should do no time. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right, cool. We're going to wrap up. So try to um, bring your signs over to this pile here. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. What time should people come to court? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 500 Indian Avenue? 500 Indiana Avenue. Okay, 500 Indiana Avenue Northwest. I think that works. All right. The chant of the day on J20 was Ah uh, Anti Anti Capitalista. So <laughs> why don't we do a round of Ah uh, Anti Anti Capitalista? Ah uh, Anti Anti Capitalista. Ah uh, Anti Anti Capitalista. Ah uh, Anti. Anti-capitalista, ah, anti, anti-capitalista, ah, anti, anti-capitalista, ah, anti, anti-capitalista, ah, anti, anti-capitalista, ah, anti.
Antica Vitalista! Ah. <laughs>